Like a metronome, the reliable Ryan Dungey had pounded out three wins in 12 straight podium finishes. At the halfway point of the season, he had his second consecutive title in sight until tragedy struck at Redbud. And this is a rare moment. Ryan Dungey off the side of the track. Dungey's down and stuck under his bike. Washington's own Ryan Villapoto returns home to the Pacific Northwest for the first time since 2011 with the points lead firmly in hand. And with five rounds to go in the championship, the time is now for riders like Justin Barsha, James Stewart, and the rejuvenated Josh Grant to get their first win of the season. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross is set for gate drop live on Fuel TV. on the banks of the Columbia River for round eight of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. This is the Peterson Cat Washougal National. Hello everyone, welcome to Washougal, Washington. Jason Waget and four-time Pro Motocross champion Jeff Emig here for two hours of live motocross coverage on Fuel TV. We'll have our 450 class followed by our 250 class. Giving to the stories in the 450s, start of course with the points. Ryan Villapoto now with a 40 plus point edge over Ryan Dungey and a lot of that due to some bad luck for Dungey at our last race in Michigan at Redbud. So let's give you the storylines we'll be following throughout the day today. First, you have to start with what led to Dungey's undoing at our previous race. In the first moto, he was running second, bike problems. He didn't even finish that one, scored zero points. In the second race, he was running second behind Villapoto, and this big crash led to a third place finish. In fact, he was lucky to even get up and score anything in that one at all. So now Villapoto carries the momentum from that victory to this, his home state. He is a Washington native. We are racing in Washington. A lot of fans of the fence is certainly going to be cheering for the number two today. And he started it the right way by going blazing fast in both practice sessions. Villapoto, your fastest rider in qualifying today on the Monster Energy Kawasaki. So it sets up a real showdown. Villapoto with the big points lead as the opportunity to maybe cruise, just collect some points. But he wants to win this race in front of the home folks desperately, Jeff. So what do you expect between these guys? Well, I mean, how ironic is it that as great as Ryan Villapoto has been in his career, that his hometown race here at Washougal that he's never won the overall. He's won motos, but he hasn't completed the whole thing and taken the overall. Today, he started out right. He's the fastest qualifier. Check. Now he's got two more motos to try to accomplish that. The problem is his nearest competitor, Ryan Dungey, he's won the last five in a row. Five in a row Dungey has won here, so momentum is on his side also, and Dungey desperately needs a win to get himself closer in the championship chase. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You would think the track, because it's Villapoto's home one, yep. would favor his style, but Dungey has had the most success here of anyone the last few years. We'll see if he can continue that today. For more, let's send it down to the starting line with Aaron Coscarelli. Thanks a lot, Jason. I'm here with Ryan Villapoto. He was the fastest in qualifiers. And Ryan, there's a lot of mixed reactions from the different riders about this track. What makes Washougal such a difficult track for riders? Uh, I mean, the dirt's a real technical dirt, and the trees, they play, uh, so the, so the shadows come into play later in the afternoon. But um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a tough track in general just because you have to be very consistent. And uh, like I said, a little technical, you have to have throttle control. and. Uh, Make sure you take your time on the track. All right, good luck to Ryan Villapoto, looking to get his first win here at his home state. Let's head over to Ryan Dungey. He was fourth in qualifiers, looking, if he wins today, his sixth straight win here at Washougal. Ryan, obviously, it's important to get a good start, but why is it so important to get a good start here at Washougal? Uh, I think I think with, uh, with this track, it's just... Uh, you know, it, it, it's not a lot of lines, you know, and everything kind of funnels down into into one, especially as you get closer to the finish. But like any track, though, a start's going to be key, and, and uh, just it just helps you out tremendously. So we try to get up to good start and put down some good laps. This will be your sixth straight win if you win here today. Why are you so successful here? Uh, you know, I just... Uh, just I think, um, you know, I got my very first win here as a, a national win um, in motocross, and it's just been good, you know, but uh, every year is different, so we'll try to keep uh, taking it, you know, one year at a time and 
having fun. All right, good luck to you, Ryan Dungey. Guys, back up to you. Well, thanks, Aaron. All those victories Dungey has here so far, he needs one today more than ever. We'll be right back. That's Multnomah Falls, not too far from where we are located in Washougal, Washington. Not too long, by the way, until we start racing in our first 450 class mode of the day. Let's give you the uh, 411 and show you how motocross works. We will run two classes today. First, our 450s. We'll follow it with our 250 Moto 1 at the top of the next hour. And then we'll have a second set of motos on the NBC Sports Network right after that. Combine those scores to determine an overall winner for the day. Now, let's get to the track map brought to you by Kawasaki. Jeff, take us for a ride around Washougal. Well, Washougal is arguably the most scenic track on the circuit. It's also one of the toughest, and as we uh, get through the first and second turn area, up Horsepower Hill, as the locals call it, the thing to know about this track is it has a hard clay base, and in spots it looks just really nice and loamy, lots of traction. Then you hit the slick hard spots. We're going to be talking about that quite a bit today. Down this main drop-off, uh, massive spectator area, uh, right through this middle section here. If you can get through these jumps quick, over some of the man-made obstacles that they have, zigzag your way back through the trees massive step up tabletop another one now you come down a fast straightaway and they've added this little kink this year to slow this down then you come around the final turn into the whoop section the drag race all the way to the lucas Oil finish line then what would be the old first turn back in my days <laughs> That's uh, a long time tight ago. section of track. It's really narrow through these sections. You have to be precise with your lines. If you blow your turns, you make a, a big mistake through the mechanics area, and that's a lap of Wash Eagle. All right, so what are the Rocky Mountain ATV MC keys to the race here, Jeff? Hey, there's going to be slick spots, and mm -hmm. I'm going to point that out. Where the dirt is dark, mm -hmm. that's where there's going to be traction. Where it's light, no traction. And now, five races to go, the home stretch towards the championship. Lay it all on the line. If you've got to be dialed in by this point. We know the start is so critical in motocross, and this year there's money on the line courtesy of MotorcycleSuperstore.com. You get one whole shot point for a whole shot in this moto. At the end of the year, we'll total up all those points and give out $25,000 in the 450 class by the rider that has the most points, although they all say the start's about a whole lot more than money. It's about track position. We're about to find out who has it here at Washougal. Dungey beats everyone in the first turn and gets to the MotorcycleSuperstore.com strike first. So the Red is Bull it? KTM man is in the front. Is that three KTMs up there? Looks like Justin Barsh on the Honda just getting in there. That was Michael Byrne, Andrew Short, both on that BTOSports.com team. Dungey on the factory Red Bull team. KTMs are dialed in here off the start at Washougal. Absolutely, and Villapoto about fifth right now. It's Barsha into the number two spot on the 51, then Short, James Stewart on the seven. And Villapoto battling it out with Josh Grant. Josh Grant, Michael Lassie, oh. both usually excellent Nicoletti starters. Off the track. They're just inside the top ten. And look at Nicoletti. He can't get back on. He's going to have to wait for the whole pack to go by. Wow, just one little error makes all the difference. Now Short and Stewart and Villapoto going at it for third, fourth, and fifth. Barsha right in front of them on the 51 in second. Stewart desperately trying to get. Oh, look at the drive he gets. Scrubs Ooh. the triple. Wow. Gets he, past Short. He accelerated out of that turn so fast. And we talk about track position and all that here at Washugo, how important it is. But the roost here hurts so bad that flies off the back of these 450s. So there's a lot of incentive to get out front. <laughs> we know how explosive number two here on the green Kawasaki, Villapoto, can be in the beginning part of the race. He's got his work cut out for him. Also, because you can be too aggressive on this track. They've put down some water. There's going to be some slippery spots. If he pushes it too hard too soon, could possibly make a mistake, and it could cost him big time. Filippoto going to work on Short, who's been out at this game a long time. He is not easy to get around. And you see Villapoto's face with that challenge right now. Wow, look at Villapoto riding all the wide lines. And does he have it? No. Short slams the door one more time. Whoa. Oh, three times. The outside lines, that has been where Villapoto has made his money this year, making those passes short, had to cover each that. time, and now an inside for Villapoto, and a look back. Got the little, uh, little attitude look back, or either that, or just trying yeah, right. to make sure he's clear of Andrew right there, but Villapoto riding with so much confidence. Uh, he has been exceptional this year, 11 moto wins, four overalls, 
Oh, oh Stewart was off the track into the trackside banners. Got back on and luckily didn't oh, suck into that banner into the bike. But where did Villapoto even come from? And the left side, Ryder's left side, has been better. Stewart takes the line back. They have added some rollers and a small jump midway up Horsepower Hill to try to slow these 450s down. And the left side is nice and smooth. It's this tight S-turn section where Nicoletti got run into on the first lap. See, there's just no oh. room for Villapoto to make passes, but he's still trying to find some lines. Built Ford Tough drop off. Look at that, an ocean of motocross fans here cheering their favorite riders on. And I like what I'm seeing out of James Stewart right now. Yep. The green fender got next to him. Didn't care. Twisted to throttle. <laughs> Stewart has steadily been getting better each and every moto this season. Of course, with James, it's his mistakes that have cost him. So if he keeps it on two wheels, keeps focused, Ooh. he's got the speed, definitely has the style. Watch this jump here. The way these guys just shrug off those mistakes, I mean, he was so sideways on the approach of that jump, no problem. I watched Ryan Villapoto in practice do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. As long as the front wheel is pointed the direction they want to go, they don't seem to care how huh? far the back of the bike <laughs> gets out of line. Because I'm telling you, that thing on the right side of the handlebars, the throttle, you keep that thing turned. Oh, oh Villapoto oh. struggling in the whoops. Here, Short trying to challenge him again. Man, we have seen quite a few near misses already. Need to show him a signboard with the keys to the race here. <laughs> Watch, Watch slick the slick spots. <laughs> it's kind of hard. I'll talk to Mike of Williamson here in between right. motos, right? We don't have much time for that. All right, Philip <laughs> Boto trying to mount a charge forward, but he's got some fast guns in front of him. So Villa Poto. All right, Villapoto with Short behind him, but you don't see Stewart in the picture any longer. Why is that? Because of those few mistakes. So I guess it was a battle of who suffered the most. Stewart made a few mistakes. He didn't lose much time. Villapoto's mistake cost him dearly. He's got to go back to work. And don't forget, Barsh is still up there as well. Yeah, taking a look here, Villapoto's last lap around was a 214. Of course, he got really squirrely through that whoop section right before the finish, so it cost him. Uh, he was a 214. His fastest in qualifying, fastest lap of anyone, was a 207, 207.9. Wow. So wow. right now, the pace, the fastest pace is being set by our leader, Ryan Dungey, at a 211.9. So the track has slowed down quite a bit from uh, earlier today in qualifying practice. Villapoto has to reset himself and go to work. But the good news for him, the gap is not that big. Dungey is your leader here on the one. But you see Barsha and Stewart and even Villapoto not too far behind. Only 5.9 5 uh, 5 seconds separate the top five. And you see that Geico countdown clock top of the screen. That's the race duration. We'll do 30 minutes. And then when that clock expires, we'll do two more laps. Yeah, basically, once the clock hits zero, yep. the next time the leader comes by, two lap board goes out. Now, we have seen it where there's still a couple of seconds left on the clock. Oh, yeah. Okay, leader goes by. Right. Sorry, you didn't make it. So then that makes for a, a long race. So right? plenty of opportunity, basically. There's a long way to go for these guys to get the hooks into Dungey. But we'll show you how he got that early lead with the MotorcycleSuperstore.com whole shot replay. Take us through this, Jeff. Well, look for the orange fender there. Number one, your reigning champ, Red Bull KTM. Has got this whole shot all the way, but look right there. There's Michael Byrne on the left. It was Andrew Short on the right. And then Barsha and Stewart, the rest of the group there. Nice way to start it off for Ryan Dungey. He needs a win desperately. And here are your uh, whole shot point standings. Barsha and Stewart tied at the top. Unless he's got a couple as well. Dungey yeah, and Villapoto have gotten good starts this year. But yeah, this still only two uh, points total for Dungey so far this year. Yeah, yeah, that would be your top three there. So pretty competitive. Justin Barsha, always been great off of the starts. He's been in a bit of a lull here the last couple mm -hmm. of weeks, but he's got this number one, uh, 51, that red muscle milk Honda up front, riding a good pace right now. Dropped his lap time to a 211. James Stewart, though, 210.6, last lap around. Number seven here, Yoshimira Suzuki, the yellow bike, fastest rider on the track at the moment. So Dungey leading the battle seems to be between Stewart and Barsha for second and third. Villapoto not able to make up much ground back there in fourth. 
That battle for second could be exactly what Dungy needs. It's his opportunity to do what he has to do, and that is win today. We'll see if he can hang on. Back here at Washougal, Washington, and this crowd has been treated to a thriller already. Ryan Dungey leading the way over James Stewart. Demetrius Johnson and John Moraga come face to face on Fuel TV Live prior to their championship bout on Fox. It's the UFC way in which starts Friday at 7 Eastern, only on Fuel TV. Now we're going to show you the top four in this race. You might have caught a change in the order just as we were going to break. It's still Dungey at the number one position. It was Justin Barsha and James Stewart battling second and third. Where's Barsha? Well, he went down. So Stewart is now in the number two position. And Villapoto has inherited third. Barsha is fourth. It wasn't a bad crash for Barsha, but it made all the difference. Man, Stewart almost lost front end. Oh, and he's the look back at that end coming in and out. There. This Ooh. is treacherous. And especially, they want to get on the throttle and get across these whoops right here. But Barsha, it's amazing that he's running. Watch what happened to him earlier while running second. He comes into this right-hander, gets on the gas. It's, it's, I'm not sure if he was in neutral. I mean, he might have buried it in that berm because the bike just sort of stopped. I was waiting to see if one of the tires uh, jumped out of the berm, but that's not what happened. The bike just kind of stopped. So probably a good chance that when he hit the bottom of that berm the, on the left side of the bike, the, uh -huh. that hard dirt might have kicked up and uh, kicked the bike into neutral. Wow, grab the shift lever there. Looks like a battle beginning to materialize what is now for second, Stewart and Villapoto. Now they had a race of it about three laps ago. Villapoto made a mistake. Stewart able to get away. Is Villapoto starting to find the flow here? Oh, yeah. He just turned a 208.9. Wow. Stewart into the 209s. Dungy down to a 2010. But Villapoto, he is definitely finding the flow right now. It, he, it's great to see a rider in this position. Like, things like that. He's just riding with so much confidence and so much flow. It's like he can just bounce off of bumps and hills and just put the bike wherever he wants. Villapoto, of course, if you really study his technique it's all about getting the power to the rear tire he is just uh, a master at getting the power down right being able to twist the throttle and get their tire to uh, rear tire to bite right now the problem is you can see in some of these fast sections he's taking on a lot of roost and it's so bad here it hurts so bad you have to Plan your spots on the track, where you have your passing spots, where the track opens up, where you can be aggressive, and be right on the rear tire of the rider in front of you. If not, in these fast sections, you got to back off or you got to move to the side if there's room. Yeah, and it's bizarre because it's not an exceptionally rocky track. So what no. makes that roost so painful? It's just this hard clay here. It's uh, I can tell you it hurts. <laughs> okay, okay, personal experience. Right here. Now, see, both riders <laughs> getting through clean, and they stay to the left in the beginning. Villapoto switches in the middle of the whoops, goes back over to the right. Now, those whoops are, are they're kind of uh, uh, each side. Each whoop is a little bit off, off camber, so they're not completely smooth. That's why you see the riders jumping around, uh, not just staying straight down one line. First part of this track around Horsepower Hill and after the starting line, certainly Villapoto was quicker than Stewart got to the rear wheel. Second part of the track down on the downhill, the finish line and all that, Stewart actually extending it just a little bit. Villapoto has to go back to work. Yeah, and Villapoto was really clean through here last lap. You notice he's, he's a little ways behind right now. He was much closer. But watch his line right here. He's going to get in this soft berm, get on the rear tire and just and just lean the bike over, bury it in there. And that berm keeps pushing out as the moto goes on. By the end of the moto, I suspect that they're going to be holding that line tight on a hard pack surface. It's going to be much different. Villapoto oh. all the way off to the side of those new rollers that they built here on Horsepower Hill. He's trying to minimize the damage. Those rollers are there to slow the riders down. He's trying to avoid all that by working the edge. All three riders in the top three. Last lap around, we're at a 209. So Dungey responded. There's a lot of places on this track where you can see the, the riders uh -huh. behind you. You can judge that. You're constantly using your uh, peripheral vision to, to gauge where they're at. Dungey dropped it down to a 209.6. Stewart, 209.7. Villapoto, a 209.7. So last lap around, Dungey actually the fastest now with a four-second lead. Yeah, and we're already nearing the halfway mark. You see that's the 15 minutes there on the countdown clock. So I can remind you, as always, 
15 minutes, you could save 15% or more on your car motorcycle insurance. It is abnormal this year for it to be halfway mark of the race, and Villapoto not a man in a charge for the lead. Dungey rides so well here. Why do you think that is? Uh, he's, he mentioned to us earlier that he got his first win here, uh -huh. and that it, it naturally, you have a lot of confidence coming to this track. You, do, you just agree with it, and his style that he has, his technique, he's really smooth with the throttle, right? He has his, like, basic textbook perfect uh, technique. So in the small sections and then also the rutted corners, he's really good at keeping his feet up, mm -hmm. knees kind of up by the handlebars, not letting his feet drag, therefore keeps his momentum. And uh, last week had, of course, the mechanical problems at Redbud. And a lot of people wondering, was that a bike problem? Did Dungey just stall the machine and flood it and then kill the battery? Let's send it down to Aaron with an update on what happened to the machine at Redbud. Aaron? Yeah, there was a lot of confusion about what happened, Jason. And now we know the exact reason why. I talked to KTM's manager, Roger Coster. He told me what happened was the bike's battery actually malfunctioned. It has a safety heat switch. Um, and it ended up being a faulty heat switch. It turned off before it should have. Um, it's still really under investigation. They don't really know the exact reason why that happened. And the crazy thing about it was they had just put in a brand new battery that day after riding with the same battery for the past year. So an unfortunate mishap that cost Dungey quite a bit of points, guys. Yeah, that is strange. I think they were running the same battery in the bike for a year and a half, but I guess that was the one that was working. Yeah, and it, it's, hey, I mean, that's motorsports, right? Mm -hmm. it, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, the, you know, the machine breaks. They're pushing the performance level of everything, but that is just a straight bad luck deal. Okay, last lap around, Dungey was the fastest with the 2092, so almost got into the 208s. Stewart, 2094, Villapoto, 2097. Okay. I believe here in this last half a lap, this has tightened up. Uh, bad luck for another local rider. That's Ricky Dietrich making his return to racing today, but he is in the pits, just, just behind the mechanics area up to the side of the track. Tough break there for uh, Ricky. Looks like he's in a little bit of pain, but yeah, he's so. smiling. So it's kind of one of those where uh, um, you, might be able to right. figure, yeah. you might be able to figure it out just by watching the screen what might yeah. happen there to uh, RD. Let's switch to the other RD, Ryan Dungey, who is leading and just starting to stretch it a little bit over Stewart, who's done a great job of holding Villapoto behind him. Okay, Dungey goes by at a 210 6, Stewart at 210, Villapoto at 210. So a slow lap, a couple of seconds slower that lap. They might have caught some traffic in a bad area. Maybe they backed the pace down a little bit. Track, maybe a berm or two has gone away. But the lead grew. I thought it looked like visually to me that Stewart had caught up. Now it's 4.3 seconds. So Dungey, a couple tenths of a second, every lap is still pulling away. Well, I want to ask you, you mentioned how slick the track is, that you could have problems and you override it. Is it harder to have a consistent lap, lap to lap on this track more so than others? If you're not that good. Oh, okay. So I guess it's Are fine you saying for these for me? guys. Okay. Well, not for me. Professional racers, they're good. We'll be right back. <laughs> And out of nowhere, Ryan Villapoto has struck, and I'm talking three or four corners. He made up a ton of ground on James Stewart and has put the Monster Energy Kawasaki in front of the Yoshimura Suzuki. This is a battle for second, Jeff. And these fans from the great Northwest, they responded when Villapoto dropped down that built Ford Tough drop off, and he had taken the position from Stewart on the backside of the track. That is what they want to see out of their points leader. Watch this replay. Gets set up on Horsepower Hill. They come over the top right here. Villapoto's got to drive. Stewart's got the good line. Makes a little mistake. Front wheel goes back and forth. Look how Villapoto is here. Stewart guards the inside. Villapoto stays hard on the gas. Goes around the outside of James Stewart. Look at this. Already on the throttle, entering Ooh. the turn. Spinning the tire on the face of that first Feeling jump. the flow. <laughs> and no problem. So now Stewart tries to stick with him, but uh, Villapoto's got something else to worry about. He's got to try to make up five seconds on Ryan Dungey. Hey, the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship returns to Fuel TV. It's next week, the Red Bull Spring Creek National coming at you live from Millville, Minnesota. That's next Saturday, 1 Eastern, right here on Fuel TV. Jason, the race is on now. The chase here. 
Couple laps ago, Villapoto was 6.7 seconds behind Dungey. Comes around this time after turning a 2.09.4. Now the lead is 5.8 between Dungey and Villapoto. So Villapoto tightened it up just a little bit along with taking second position. And I'm trying to explain to the folks when we were away at break, it looked like Stewart was pretty stable in the number yeah. two position. Villapoto in about four corners made up all the distance and then passed him. He is Look on a that. roll. Wow, that was so cool. That uh, talk about going from left to right using all of the track. The thing is, Villapoto has that confidence, and it's hard to get that confidence. It's hard to to be the guy and know that you're the guy. Mm -hmm. It takes so much hard work, dedication, uh, effort, everything to get there. But when you have that, you have that ability. What I believe Villapoto a couple laps ago sat back for a second, took a deep breath said, OK, I need to figure out my lines, get focused, drop the hammer. And look at this. It has dropped James Stewart now by a couple of seconds. Yeah. And I suspect it with the lap times that he's turning right now that he's going to shorten that gap between himself and Ryan Dungey as we head towards the finish at Geico clock at seven minutes plus two laps. He doesn't need to get much closer to Dungey to actually see him in some of the longer stretches of the track. So that's goal number one. Get the guy in your sights and then try to run him down. It's that new section that you mentioned at the bottom of the downhill. Slowed it up just a little bit, and this is where you have to really be patient through this area. And as the, uh, if, if this, whoa, big swap there for Villapoto. And, and that and, happens here yeah. at Washougal. So Dungey comes by, turns a, a 211. Villapoto a 2097. Now the gap went from 5.8 to 4.4 seconds. Not much time left. But that is just as much from Dungey's time dropping off as it is from Villapoto's speed picking up. A bad lap for the Dunge. Yeah. Hey, he's starting to get into lapped riders. Sometimes you catch him in the wrong spot. Cost you half a second here, quarter second there. Other, other riders coming through. Barsha just came through fourth, fifth is short, sixth. Grant in blue on the 33. Then it is Alessi in seventh. And then, <laughs> can I say, another classic Weston Pike versus Chad Reed battle for the seventh and eighth place position. Pike has not even raced with us since round two in Colorado. Doesn't have the funding to race any of the events back east. He's a California native, but here is the amazing thing. He does not miss a beat. Doesn't race any nationals for two months, and he's right where he left off. He has been exceptional this year, and uh, he's one of the bigger guys on the on the circuit. He can definitely muscle that, that 450 around like it's a mini bike. And it's just been amazing this season how good he has been riding and how confident and comfortable he is riding with um, former race winners, champions yep. in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross and not being intimidated one bit. And obviously, you take one look at him with the beard and all that. He's a pretty intimidating <laughs> dude to begin with. So, But Chad Reed has had his hands full of this moto. He has been catching roost off the back of Pike's bike for laps now. Reed work on one side of the track, Pike the other. I talked to Pike earlier today. He's basically just been chasing the money. Uh, got paid to go to a race in Australia, then raced a couple of local events up here that had big pro purse money, made six, $7,000 this week alone just at uh, local purse events. But he says he doesn't have any racing plan between now and the next race he will do, which is our next to last round in Salt Lake City in almost a month. I'm impressed that the guy, yeah. without putting in motos against this caliber of competition, is able to maintain the intensity week in and week out. He hasn't lost anything. In fact, Reed lost a little ground there with that other rider down. Yeah, Pike ran a two, eighth place, by the way, for Pike. 213.7 last time around. Reed a 213.8, so basically the same. Problem is for these guys, they're 45 seconds off the lead as Dungey and Villapoto both turned a 210. Dungey was half a second quicker. Now the next rider, this is actually Malcolm Stewart. You normally expect that bike to be red. The Lucas Oil Troy Lee Honda, but they like to debut the new Troy Lee gear up here at this event. They always bust out some special look, and this year it is the, I don't know, you want to call that green or yellow or I don't know what it is, but it's certainly notable on the number 32. Wow. He is in 10th with Weimer right behind him. Well, Troy definitely not afraid to use the brightest colors in the spectrum, and that's what's great for them with the team that they have set up is, is they have that ability to do all these custom one-off things. Oh. And Troy definitely takes advantage of that. One off the track was Weimer. Made a mistake through that section, got back on, but uh, didn't even lose much ground. 
He lost you a little like bit that? of time, like but that? yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, taking a look here, Malcolm Stewart, number 32 on the colored Honda. Here it's not, uh, what is that? You said green? Ah, it's greenish yellow. It reminds greenish me yellow, of either yep. an apple or a fire truck, which I never realized looks similar. Well, I'm not real good with colors, but I can tell you okay. he's been riding exceptional uh, this season so far. Has a nice, uh, solid ride here with the top 10 going. 214 last time around. Yeah, Weimer is 11th, and Ryan Sipes will come through in the uh, number 12 position behind him. Trey Kennard struggling a bit in this one. He is 13th. Tickle and Brayton round out your top 15. Looks like Stewart has stretched it just a little bit more now over Weimer. Also a special day here for the Stewart family. Yes. Big James celebrating a birthday. Yeah. So uh, both Stewart boys looking to finish this one in the top 10 with Malcolm 10th and James shooting for a podium in third. So it should be a pretty proud papa there. Here comes Weimer. Coming through next. And then we'll show you the gap to Sipes on the Rockstar Energy Racing Machine. And finally, we see Trey Kennard. And I'll tell you, though, if you're Kennard, Goal number one, I would think, today is get through this event healthy. He has been snake bit here at Washougal. Two different times he has broken his femur at this track. Oh, yeah. And uh, you mentioned That's, the good vibes that Dungey has yeah. coming in as a former winner. What's it like on the other end of the spectrum? I've, I've never been in that situation, <laughs> thankfully. Have, yeah. But uh, I can tell you that uh, he was really good today in qualifying practice. He was fifth. So he's out there. He can run the pace. But now, like you said, it's important for him to, uh, to stay focused. And number one objective would be to not hit the ground here today and uh, get some good points going here. Muscle Milk Honda Rider. And congrats to Trey. Uh, got engaged over our break last weekend. So uh, he and his uh, new fiance, Hannah, uh, good luck to them in the future. And Trey right now. Hoping for a better start, I would think, in Moto number two could help him right now, running 13th in Moto one. But again, he's just happy to be here healthy and racing. And we'll be back with a conclusion from Washougal after this. Well, these fans at Washougal watched Ryan Villapoto in those days growing up to be a future superstar. But it is odd how it has worked here in Washington. It has been the domain of Minnesota's Ryan Dungey, and the gap has stabilized at five seconds. Right around five seconds. Last time around, Dungey turned a 2.11.3 to Villapoto's 2.10.6. Over that tabletop, when they make that U-turn and come back, every lap, Dungey is looking hard over his left shoulder, trying to see where the number two of Ryan Villapoto is at, pacing himself. Now, two-lap board is out. They came by last lap. The countdown clock was down to five seconds. So they just <laughs> missed it. So basically, this means this is going to be basically a one lap longer race. So we'll see if that's going to give uh, Ryan Villapoto an extra lap to possibly close up, to possibly take advantage of some of the lap riders that they're working themselves through and get himself into the number one position. Running 212 lap times now, both of them. At one point, both were in the 208s and 209s. So the track slowed down quite a bit. Is that just all traffic? Well, there's, there's traffic, the track. I mean, um, 212s, that's definitely off the pace of what they're capable of running. They've been down in the 208. So, uh, but you can see getting around uh, uh, Nick Way there, going a lap down as Andrew Short's working his way through some other riders. Short is in the number five spot. It's been a good moto for him. A nice oh. rebound here the last couple of weeks as he goes back uh, in oh. toward the top five. There's Freeberg. He just put a lap down. Short struggling mightily when this year began, but he has been a top five threat the last three or four races, has really found his legs now on the BTO Sports KTM. And then it's Grant in sixth. Same thing for him. Didn't start the season out the way he wanted, but he's gotten much better the last couple of rounds on the JJR Toyota Yamaha. And I see the mechanics area here. They used to turn at the bottom of the hill right there. Now they're coming all the way up. It's kind of an off camber getting into it, all the way up into the first turn area. So they've changed that a little bit. I've really liked the flow of that now. And then you head back up, horsepower hill. Now see these rollers they added in the bottom? Plus, you see those series logo uh, uh, the banners right there. And they've added a jump there, so it really slows the riders up. They still can fly all the way over the top of the hill if, if they want to. Alessi, Plenty of horsepower. 
Sorry to cut you off there. Leslie is in seventh. He's been there most of this one. Some of the longer stretches, he can see Grant, who's about two and a half seconds in front of him. Remember, this first moto last year, unless he won it, had pressure from Dungey all the way. Dungey fell, and unless he was able to hold on, that was his uh, for only first and only moto win last year. And <laughs> look Pike, at this. Pike and Reed battle as it continue. That's actually a lap rider who he's just gotten around. 7 2 2. 7 2 2, not 2 2. Uh, so he's got a little gap now over Reed, does Pike. Unbelievable. What he has done is a full privateer. He's got a van parked out in the back of the pits. I don't think he's quite at the level where he's living in it down by the river, but he is basically just racing these races to make purse money to get to the next round. And like we said, he doesn't even go to the races on the East Coast. But if a team's looking for someone next year, he's certainly making a name for himself. We're still waiting on, uh, I believe, Reed to come through next. We're going to go back to Dungey. Uh, you can now see Villapoto. The five-second gap is now a 4.1-second gap, but this is the last lap. One lap to go up Horsepower Hill. Dungey has executed this race to perfection so far. He's, he's uh, had the luxury of being out front, but Villapoto has been the aggressor, so he's, he patiently but aggressively worked his way past the other competitors. It's going to feel good for Villapoto that, that he put himself if he can finish in this second position, that he's caught Dungy. Dungy's going to feel great that he gained three points towards the championship and has won the moto, but still half a lap left to go, and anything can happen, especially as aggressive as Ryan Villapoto is riding at the moment. Yeah, and how slick this track is. We've seen so many mistakes out of all these riders, so Dungy having to press on this final lap at least gives Villapoto an opportunity. If he pushes him into a mistake, he could get there. And it didn't look like that last section of jumps that Dungey got through as clean as he'd like to. It just didn't seem like he had momentum going. And look at how close Villapoto yeah. is just in that one section. One lap rider in front of them. They're going to make a left, a right, and then the final whoop section. Dungey does not want it to come down to that. Final turn here into the whoops. Fans starting to pick it up. They're excited. He's got a rider in front of him. Villapoto's going to give it a run. He runs out of time. Ryan Dungey wins. Moto number one here at Washougal. And his spectacular performances at this track. Another one in the books. Dungey just rides darn well here. Give credit to Villapoto for closing it in at the end. Wow. But that's Sportsmanship the there. Yeah. One so and two. Both riders have won this championship before. They know what's on the line. They, they rode excellent races right then. That was uh, a very difficult track, tricky track. And uh, there's, you can see why they, uh, they gapped Stewart by 29 seconds at the finish. And Stewart rode an awesome race. Yeah, and Stewart was right there with them at the yeah. halfway mark. So that's where they did their damage. And what can you say? Now it's a 39-point lead. Just trying to chip away at least is Dungy. And maybe he'll hope for a mistake or a problem uh, for Villapoto, uh, although on the lines that he had two weeks ago at our last race at Redbud. So the Ryans are headed back to the podium area. We'll talk to them right after this. Back here live on Fuel TV, our 250 class riders are getting ready for their first moto that'll come up at the top of the hour. And it's getting nervous time for the riders and mechanics there. And we will send it down to the finish line area with Aaron, who has our race winner, Ryan Dungey. Yep, Jason, another one in the books, like you said, for Ryan Dungey, who continues to dominate here at Washougal. You get the whole shot, and you told me how important that start is at the beginning of the race. So what was key for you for the start? Uh, just like I told you before we took off, is definitely the start. Um, got off to a good jump and was able to just put the power to the ground, which was awesome. But uh, the, the whole race, you know, I felt really good. A couple little mistakes, but uh, we made some changes going into that one. And... The Team Red Bull KTM guys did an awesome job there and um, just try to try to ride good laps. You know, if you get behind people, even if it's a couple positions, you know, that roost, it really hurts. So being able to be up front and kind of ride my own lines and, and, and decide was, was nice. Well, I know KTM, your team took Red Bull really hard. Um, what does getting a victory in this first moto mean for you, especially after what you went through a couple weeks ago? Uh, I mean, like anything, you know, it's not, uh, you know, it, it's like adver when you face adversity, you know, you got to respond to it and um, and move on in life. You know, it's uh, it's part of racing. Uh, sometimes it happens, and it ain't gonna do you no good to be down and stuff. So just to, to keep our good keep our hopes up and good spirits, and um, and you know, this, this win was nice, but uh, there's a heck of a lot more to go. So um, we'll focus on that. Congratulations, great job, Ryan. I'll show you the race recap, which will include the great start from Dungey that they were talking about here. 
Yeah, watch, gets out front. That's exactly where you want to be. Heading up horsepower hill, dropping off that built Ford Tough drop off the very first lap. Such an amazing feeling here. So Dungey has it under control, and he makes the other riders behind him uh, have to do something special. Barsha, watch right here, makes a little mistake. Looked like he kicked his bike down into a lower gear, possibly hit neutral when he did that. Bottom line, he went down, lost some positions. So it's Stewart and Villapoto now battling for the number two position. And watch Villapoto the long way around, just holds it on and takes second from Stewart. Around the outside with a very confident, aggressive pass. He would close up on Dungey at the end. But not quite close enough, and Dungey takes the win in moto number one. Led every lap of that one. We'll show you the results of this first moto. You'll see Villapoto Stewart second and third. Barsha after the fall was able to still finish fourth. Grant gets around short to take fifth and we'll send it back down to Aaron. Thank you guys. I'm here with Ryan Villapoto. You made that aggressive pass on James Stewart for second place. How difficult is it to make a pass on this particular track? It's definitely tough. You know, it's uh you have to be uh, really easy on the throttle and, and, and have throttle control here. So I was able to get around him on the outside up there on top of the hill and then put a charge in for uh, Ryan, but, you know, just had too much of a gap to, to bridge. But I was able to, to do it halfway decent, and uh, towards the end there, was it was close. But can't thank everybody at Monster Energy Kawasaki and, uh, you know, all my personal sponsors, Jeff Fox, Parts Unlimited, Thor, Oakley, Alpen Stars, Atlas Brace, um, Falcon Tires, Volcom, everybody, thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. Good luck. And we'll show you the upcoming schedule. We're racing, of course, today on the NBC Sports Network for our second moto. So flip over to that as soon as our fuel show ends at the top of the next hour. And then next weekend, we're racing at Spring Creek, Millville, Minnesota, Fuel TV, NBC, and the NBC Sports Network giving you the coverage there. Let's send it back down to Aaron. I am here with third place finisher James Stewart. James, you are looking more and more confident, confident more and more dominant out there. Is that what you're feeling? Um, no, I feel like I'm running better, um, you know, still a little bit. Had some good laps going and then uh, just got tight, you know, uh, after last weekend and, uh, you know, being right there, a little frustrated. So uh, go back and see if we can uh, eliminate that track slippery. Uh, almost had a couple moments out there. So uh, try to go back and regroup and get ready for second moto. Thank you so much, James. And it's his dad's birthday today. So maybe he's going to try to get moto two win for him. Good morning, Washougal. For over 30 years, that's how race day has begun here at Washougal. And today we'll end with the best rider in the world celebrating on the podium. For three centuries, the Pacific Northwest economy has been fueled by the abundance of emerald top trees that populate the landscape. It takes hard men doing the hard work of the logging industry to support many of the communities in this area of the country. The same can be said of motocross. Determined young heroes who don't mind the sweat it takes to put in the laps do the work for the elusive shot at a championship. Washugo Motocross Park may be the perfect venue, both beautiful and brutal. The best motocross riders in the world are once again ready to do the work it takes to compete and contend in the world's toughest motorsport. Just outside of Portland, Oregon, it's the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championships, Peterson Cat Washougal National in Washougal, Washington. And the fans here in the Pacific Northwest are fired up because Ryan Villapoto, their favorite son, comes in here as your points leader in the 450 class, yet he has never won at his home track. Could today be the day that number two is finally number one in front of the locals? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Washougal. Jason Wygant joined by four-time Pro Motocross champion Jeff Emick. Championship chase heating up here in the 450 class. Jeff, it's between the Ryans, Villapoto and Dungey, and they both had their moments so far this year. They have had, and 10-time uh, champion Ricky Carmichael has said that you win the title on your bad days, and Ryan Villapoto has had some bad days. 
And uh, we're going to go to the highlights of our first moto, and you'll see how this works out. It wasn't a good start for Villapoto. He had to work for it. It was Dungey shining earlier in this one. Yeah, Villapoto was stuck back in the pack. Dungey out front. And watch this battle here. Watch Villapoto around the outside. Andrew Short slamming the door once again. Villapoto cutting back to the inside. He was on the move and just really picking off riders. Got a little lucky with this one here. Barsha running second. He goes down, allows Stewart and Villapoto to go around. That would move Villapoto up into third, but he still had work to do with Stewart in front. And here's your battle for the number two spot. Once again on the outside, watch this. Unbelievable. Just his instinct to know that Stewart was going to guard the inside. Villapoto stayed on the throttle on that green Kawasaki around the Suzuki. But number one, Brian Dungey had this in hand the whole way. See how close Villapoto got there at the end, but this one belonged to Dungey. And we'll show the results here. The Ryan's trading momentum in this series. The last race was a great one for Villapoto two weeks ago in Michigan. This first moto belongs to the number one of Dungey. Villapoto, Stewart, second and third. Barsha and Grant round out the top five in the privateer. Weston Pike, first race in two months, comes back and finishes eighth. For more, let's send it down to the starting line with Aaron Coscarelli. Thanks a lot, Jason. I'm here with Ryan Dungey, who hopes to continue his dominance here at Washougal. I presume we're not going to try to do anything different from Moto1. Uh, yeah, I mean, just um, obviously getting off to a good start is going to be key again. But, um, you know, it's sun's coming out. Track's going to dry up a little bit. But uh, just just good lines, you know, get a hot lap here to see see some good lines, try to pick some good stuff so that uh, when the race time comes, we try to get the fast line. All right, good luck to you, Ryan, trying to get his sixth straight win here at Washougal. It has been a track that has favored Dungey, even though Villapoto is the local product. We'll see if that continues after this. We are back here at Washougal on the NBC Sports Network Live, getting ready for our second 450 moto of the day. Ryan Dungey won the first one over Ryan Villapoto. It should be a showdown here. Jason Wygant, Jeff Emick, Aaron Coscarelli to give you the call. A rider we want to focus on here, it's a pretty cool deal. Mike Brown is still at it, running the national number three. He has a single digit number because of that 2001 125 motocross championship. 41 years old and he still goes darn fast. Most of the time races off road, including the Enduro Cross series where he's battling for that title. Good to see him out here at the races. Why is he still doing it at age 41? Let's find out. I don't know, just the fun of it, you know, I'm not out here, it is for the number, but mainly just to keep racing, you know, I, the whole series now would be tough for me, but a couple races makes it fun, changing it up from the off-road, and uh, just to come out and race with the guys, and keep your speed up for what I'm doing in off-road, and that's the main thing, you know. For me, Enduro Cross is now like Supercross for me, it's all indoors, it happens really quick, you know, you're in and out, you know, it's laid back, you know, compared to Supercross, and everybody has fun. I enjoy it for like I'm 18 again racing that series. I usually get good starts and I um, think I'm in pretty good shape to ride the, the whole, whole length of the race. So I think just getting a good qualifying position and, and a good gate take. One week I'm doing motocross and then next week's X Games. And like I say, right now is the funnest time I think I've had in, in a long time racing. Mike Brown reminding us that, Jeff Emig, you could still potentially be of age to compete and finish in the top 20 in motos here, my man. Yeah, no what, excuses. But John Dowd has also, and he's <laughs> older true. than I am. But here's your uh, Kawasaki track map. This is what Brown and uh, the rest of these riders will have to face here at Washougal. All right, good look here at this, uh, man, one of the most scenic tracks on the circuit. Gate's going to drop. Watch the green arrow. It's going to go through the first turn area, through that MotorcycleSuperStore.com whole shot line that is where the points for the whole shot will be awarded and towards the bonus at the end of the year go to the back part of the track off the big drop off you can come down here hard on the brakes up through an area of the track so it's going to be a little bit uh, shaded there's going to be a massive drop off down into these s turns into the main uh, spectator area of the track here red bull triple jump hard on the throttle through here going through the gearbox then a massive step up tabletop. Kawasaki Terex 
Off to the right there, back down into another area of the track, a new little chicane that they added in. Be a lot of shadows through this area. It's gonna be really dark, hard to see. Buster right through the whoop section, through the Lucas Oil finish line area. Into the old first turn area. There's a nice set of switchbacks here. They're gonna really run it out. It's gonna be easy to make a mistake. You're gonna have to be patient through there. Keep your momentum. A few more jumps. Gonna make a right through the mechanics area, and that is a lap at Washugo Motocross Park. And we're gonna show you what it looks like. See the GoPro camera on the top of Ryan Villapoto's helmet? We'll have one of those on in motor number one, and we'll show you. I'm oh, sorry, this is actually the practice, and this is that legendary horsepower hill. Hard on the throttle, trying to keep the rear wheel down through these rollers, trying to manual this, drop down there, get light, fly all the way over the top. Villapoto going from the outside to the inside. One thing I've noticed here today with Villapoto is he is using all edges of the track. He has been all over the place. Good look at what this uh, soil looks like. Just rich, dark soil. And watch this, you're gonna drop down, built for tough drop off into the ocean of fans that have now, uh, uh, you know, are spectating in that area. One of the slowest sections of the track, and you speed it right back up. And we'll give you the whole shot rules here. MotorcycleSuperstore.com putting $25,000 on the line at the end of the year for the rider that collects the most points based on whole shots. You get one point for whole shotting Moto 1, two if you do it here in Moto 2. And if the same rider whole shots both motos, he gets a bonus four in one day. Dungey had the first Moto whole shot, so he wants to repeat that here. Yeah, that would be, and uh, it would set him up nicely. I believe that he's going to need the whole shot. Villapoto uh, was back in the pack by the end of the moto in one. He had caught him. He was within about a second of him. 30-second board is up. She's going to turn it sideways. She's going to run off the track, and the gate will drop between 5 and 10 seconds after the board goes sideways. So some pressure on Villapoto here. Again, he has never won at his home track here at Washougal. He was second behind Dungy in the first race. We'll combine the scores from that one and this one to determine an overall winner. Let's go racing. Oh, Villapoto and Dungey battling for it, but it's going to be Josh Grant on the 33. And then he comes off the machine. And somehow Dungey got by him and takes the lead from Villapoto. I don't know how Dungey thread the needle, but he did it. And he leads Villapoto and Grant up and down Horsepower Hill. Well, here we go. Motocross fans on the NBC Sports Network head to head. Two of the best riders, arguably the best riders in the world, one and two. It's Stewart who has gotten in front of Weimer for fourth with Brent in third. These early laps are where Villapoto has been lethal so far this year. Let's see how it plays out between the Ryans. Stewart and Grant still swapping it. And Stewart secures third. Stewart was really quick in Moto 1 for about the first 15 minutes. After that, the two leaders, one and two here, Ryan Dungey and Ryan Villapoto, Dropped him by about 25 seconds by the end of the moto. Let's see if Stewart has something a little extra here for Moto 2 to make this a three rider battle. Back section of the track, they're gonna jump up and then down. Back into view of the fans. Dungey on the number one, the Red Bull KT on the two. Villapoto on the Monster Energy Kawasaki. Okay, see how the sun has come out. Now you get into the shadows, the light, back into the dark. The dirt is really uh, dark, We're almost black in that area, and it makes it really tough to see in those transitions. You really have to be focused. Stewart was not. He lost the front wheel in that whoop section, lost a little bit of ground, now trying to make a comeback as Villapoto goes to work on Dungey. Now remember, with the two-moto format here, if Villapoto goes 2-1 and Dungey goes 1-2, they'll basically be tied on the day, both with the first and second. The tiebreaker goes to the better second moto finish. So if Villapoto wins this moto, he wins the overall no matter what happened earlier. Well, the way that the points are stacked up, Dungey is at such a deficit. After uh, the bike malfunctioned last week, he lost 25 points in one moto. It's clear, Ryan Dungey. It's not about uh, worrying about the overall. You see the points uh, right there. The, it, for Ryan Dungey, the goal is clear. Win every moto that you go out there. And that's the only way that he's going to put himself back in uh, contention for this title. He's got to chip away at it one way or another, but by racing this hard, 
and forcing Villapoto to ride the edge. Maybe he puts Villapoto potentially in a, a situation to make a mistake. That's exactly what he has to do. Talking about Ryan Dungey, he has to up his game. He has to be perfect. He has to get the starts like he has done here today. He has to ride at a pace where it forces Villapoto, if he wants to win, that he's going to have to ride beyond his limit. That's really hard to do because Villapoto really has been the standard this year. He's uh -huh. won the most overalls and the most motos. And outside of a couple of motos, he really has been uh, the fastest rider on the track. So how do you beat a rider like that? You have to keep plugging away, keep trying to make your bike better, keep trying and giving it everything you got. And now in Moto2 here at Washugal, we've got a head-to-head -head battle between the reigning champion and the points leader. Oh, Nick Way out of this one. Uh, the Mafia Moto crew, Kawasaki, talking to his mechanic. Big nasty is what the mechanic goes by, and apparently they something nasty happened either Nick or the machine, and he's out of this one. Folks on the right side of your screen, Villapoto still lurking right there behind Dungey and Stewart trying to keep pace in third. Now Villapoto dialed in a line, trying to run the outside. Lap trying to run it outside again here. Lap times for the leaders, 211. Basically identical. Stewart was really quick. He was at a 212. He's only three and a half seconds off right now, so Stewart can still put himself uh, in this battle for the lead. And let's send it down to Aaron with more on the Battle of the Ryans. Well, yeah, guys, but uh, before the event today, I talked to Carlos Rivera, who's Ryan Dungey's mechanic, and he told me they made a lot of changes to his bike to uh, uh, compensate for the slipperiness on this track. They changed the tires, they changed the suspension. But get this, Ryan Villapoto's camp has made absolutely no changes to his suspension since Southwick, and he doesn't change his tires from Supercross to Motocross. So I thought that was a pretty interesting point. No changes for Villapoto and quite a few changes for Dungey. Yeah, so no spec changes on the tires there. Um, just staying with the, the same uh, compound, the same construction that he's comfortable with, uh, the familiarity of that. He knows exactly what his bike's gonna do, anticipates what the, uh, you know, how the soil is gonna be. So he's not making any changes and that's a good thing. That the bike is fine, let me ride it. Okay, that's what you want. On the other hand, uh, Ryan Dungey's team throughout this whole championship this summer, it seems like they've been searching, they've been working, trying to find those specs on the chassis, the suspension, tires, everything, uh, to, to make the bike to his liking. It's not always perfect, but in those situations, you have to always keep trying to find the answer, find that area where the rider is not only happy, but he's confident in the setup that he has. Well, it gives you an idea how much these two have pushed each other this year. Villapoto had a good gap on speed early in the season. Dungey made the bike changes, got close. Villapoto made changes leading the Southwick, was able to pull back away. Now Dungey making changes before this one, showing he's a match again for Villapoto. They're going so much faster than they were when this series began in May. Matt Gerke, in his first race back from a broken wrist, appears to be out on the BTOsports.com. KTM yeah. holding the wrist there. I talked to him earlier today. He is far from 100%. I, yeah, I, I talked to him also, and yeah. I heard the same story. <laughs> so this is the type of track here with this hard ground, some of those big drop-offs that uh, your, your body's really going to take a beating, and you need your uh, all of your joints, your ankles, your knees, your wrists, your shoulders, everything to work properly to absorb that impact. He doesn't have that luxury, whereas the uh, wrist brace on his right wrist, and uh, that he's going to take a big impact there, and you can tell by uh, the, his body language there that it was just a little too much for him here today. What a battle between Dungey and Villapoto. It has been this close for the first seven minutes of this one, and it seems like every time Villapoto figures out a few new lines and is able to put a little pressure on, Dungey's able to respond and cover them. Yeah, and they just dropped their lap times down to a 2.09, basically identical. Stewart now six seconds off the pace. Grant, who's in fourth, he's 16 seconds off the pace, along with Chad Reed, who runs in fifth. They're going to drop down. It's that spectator section you talk about. They get their first that. glimpse of this battle in about a half of a lap. And they see no change, but still their favorite son, Villapoto, is still in the mix. Yeah, and, and what's interesting is Dungey has won five years in a row dating back to his uh, 250 class uh, races, which we're going to see the 250s here later on on NBC Sports Network. But when you win that much, you, you gain a lot of respect and you earn a lot of fans. So you got to think that 
Dungey has a lot of fans here also, even though it's basically Villapoto's backyard, right? So maybe a split uh, fan base out here right now, no? Uh, not split. Maybe there are some Dungey supporters out there, but I think they want the Washington guy to win so in Washington. So it's not 50-50. No, not 50-50. Although we'll see what happens the next race next weekend is in Dungey's home state right. of Minnesota in Millville. Now, Dungey has done very well there. It is really strange that of all the tracks on this circuit for Villa Potter to struggle on, it's the home race. Watch this. Watch this. Not Tears struggling now. To the inside. Villa Potter has the lead for the first time today. See if Dungy has an answer. Dungy's had some really quick lines on the track right now. Oh, Villapoto makes a little mistake, but doesn't lose lose the lead. Dungy has got to answer. He has to get tough. He has to get motivated and get aggressive here and try to make that move back on Villapoto. Now, is there a chess game at all as far as watching each other's lines? Is there a situation where Dungy would rather be the hunter than the hunted? Follow Villapoto no. instead of the other way around, no? No, Dungy's got the pace. He was just a little comfortable out front. Villapoto just a little more aggressive. And they race up Horsepower Hill. Fans waving the towels, they're pumped. Villapoto taking the lead, but it is far from over. Dungy hanging right with him. Okay, watch this. Villapoto had been setting up this pass for, uh, he had been kind of testing the waters, if you will, right there, hard on the gas. The outside becomes the inside. I believe he took Dungy by surprise a little bit. I don't think Dungy expected that pass there. There was, yeah, no defense at all uh, from Dungy in that situation. He made it happen so quickly. That is the MO of Villapoto. That's what he does. He is just, he finds a way just to uh, get aggressive, finds his spot, and just goes after it. And extending it just a bit now over Dungy. Could today finally be the day? Villapoto has been racing here as a pro since 2006. Has never won the overall. He's got a shot at it right now. So Villapoto through the trees, emerging from the forest. Here's the whoops in front of the finish line. This is a critical juncture in the race right now. Can Dungey keep him within sight? See if he picks up on this line right there. He rides a little bit wider line than before, but that's that's the deal. He has got to follow Villapoto's lines, somehow try to keep him in sight, try to learn from that, and then put the pressure back on. But it's just so hard to do when, when you have a rider like Villapoto. I mean, he's been the man this year. He's got the speed. Certainly has the fitness and uh, has the focus to go along with all of that. And he's beginning to get away just bit by bit. Here they are in front of the mechanics section taking the pit board signs. I don't know if it's time to read it, though. He is in a hurry. So good on the throttle there. Just, uh, it, you know what's amazing is that if, when you have seen uh, the information from the data acquisition bikes that the teams have, is especially in this day and age of the 450s is how little they're on the throttle in the wide open position mm -hmm. and there's a lot of mid throttle a lot of like quarter throttle half throttle conditions not just wide open and shut off it's a lot of very smooth and, uh, right in the middle part of the throttle range there. Yeah, it certainly wouldn't look that way when you watch Bill Poto. It looks like he's just wide open wherever he possibly can be. Yeah, and that, I believe, is the mistake sometimes that parents make. They're telling their kids, hey, you got to be wide open, man, you, you know, on it like that, and it's not necessarily the case. Dungey's now stabilized the gap. I'd say it's about a second and a half. A little bit of damage done by the Kawasaki rider the previous two laps. Now it has been even up. Left-hand turn, they're going to jump back downhill. Head back into, uh, from one of the areas with a lot of sun, back into those shaded areas, shadows. Extremely slippery right there. And there is Ryan Villapoto now as a full-grown adult leading the way at his home race in Washougal, Washington here at the NBC Sports Network. 
and extending it a bit over Ryan Dungey. He had to make the pass on Dungey to get the lead because Dungey got the start. Here's your motorcycle superstore whole shot replay. Yeah, look how competitive it is there. Grant on the blue Yamaha on the inside. Dungey, Orange KTM, Villapoto on the outside. All three riders battling to get to that line right on the top of this jump here. MotorcycleSuperstore.com whole shot is where the points are awarded. Two points go to Josh Grant. Look how close this is. Wow. And then Grant bobbled in the very next corner. Villapoto went wide, and that allowed Dungey to get to the number one spot. A few laps later, Villapoto made what we think was a surprising pass. Maybe when Dungey didn't expect it, Villapoto has taken control of the race from there. Well, and they were running inside of 210, 211s. All of a sudden, Villapoto goes to a 2088, and Dungey a 2098. So Dungey ups his pace, but Villapoto still went a second quicker. Consequently, Dungey's two and a half seconds behind Villapoto, and Stewart now is a full 13 seconds back. Just saw Stewart go by on the yellow bike, the Yoshimura Suzuki. If you didn't see the two rides in front of him, you'd think Stewart was leading the race. He's riding well all by himself, but that's only good enough for a third, the way the Ryans have pushed it. Jake Weimer in fourth. He needed this. It has been a tough season for Weimer. And then it's Grant, who you saw had the whole shot earlier, running in the number five position. And uh, Weimer was 10th in the first moto. So like I said, it's been like that for him. He's 10th of points coming into this race. He's been struggling just to get top 10s, which is not where a rider of Weimer's caliber expects to be. And then you got Grant, who was fifth in the first moto, fifth again here. Grant really starting to turn it up, second half of the year. Yeah, setting himself up nicely for a top five overall here. As, hey, Jason, do you realize that we are 15 minutes from the end of the moto? If you look at the Geico clock at the top, okay. what well, can you, our fans do in 15 minutes? We can do two things. You can watch this race, but you can also call Geico, save 15% or more on your car insurance, truck insurance, motorcycle insurance, boat, RV insurance. Uh, whatever you're looking for, they've got you covered. And then when that 15 minutes is up and the clock expires, we put out the two laps to go sign, and that is the sprint to the finish here at Lucas Oil Motocross. Rock tickle. Best finish of the year so far for him is fifth. He is sixth right now, 13th in the first moto. So Tickle bouncing back big here on the Ram Suzuki. It, it, it all gets set up by the start here. We know by the lap times and the gap that, I mean, the top two are pretty far ahead of Stewart, who's third. Then it's, it's a good 20 seconds back to Weimer. So we know that Villapoto, Dungy, Stewart really have the speed on the rest of the competition. But from there, it's literally from fourth back to, let's say, 15th, even sometimes 20th. It's so competitive yeah. with this group right here. Taking a look at Nicoletti right here, who's had some outstanding motos inside the top 10 this year. But if you don't get the start, and everyone runs such a close lap time, it's really hard to to make those passes so it's been so competitive and chad reed former champion he just went by he found that out uh in moto one he was behind weston pike the whole moto and could not pass him it's consequently chad ended up ninth pike was eight here is andrew short who is ninth in this one of the bto sports.com ktm and then michael lessie on the white smart top moto concept suzuki he finished up in uh, he is in 10th right now, and Alessi was 7th in the first moto. So you're right. These guys are all close on speed. It has been the difference in starts of the motos that has made the difference. Here is Malcolm Stewart on the Lucas Oil Troy Lee Honda. Now, Hondas are usually red, but this team debuting that new black and neon green or yellow, whatever you want to call it, gear. So they made the bike colors match to show off the 2014 uh, gear line. And here's Malcolm, who's had a great season so far. That's James Stewart's brother in his debut in the 450 division. He is 11th behind Alessi. Malcolm was 11th in Moto 1, running 11th now. And then to go back uh, just behind him right here is Tucker Hibbert, 168. Wow. Outstanding ride for him. Absolutely. On the Yamaha. He is the Snowcross. I'm sorry, Honda. Master and comes out here and races a couple of events every summer. Parts the sled back in his home in Minnesota. And what a run for him to be flirting with a top five. He's got Brayton 
on the JJR Toyota Yamaha behind him in 13th. And oh. here comes a pack. You got the Honda boys. Barsha, the number 51. Yeah, Hibbert's got some serious company right now knocking on the door, and they want in. They want a piece of his position that he has in 12 with uh, Brayton, Barsha, Kennard, and Kennard. Uh, Brown back there, too. Kennard makes the move on Barsha. Gets around his Honda Muscle Milk teammate. Two bad starts today for Kennard, but he's riding strong right now. And then it's Mike Brown. The 41-year-old right in the fight with kids about half of his age. Looking for a top 15. Brown on the number three, the orange KTM. He is 16. It is, it is amazing when a rider like Mike Brown is out there at, at his age, which is basically my age. I've been retired for 14 seasons. But to be that competitive, and he enjoys it, right? And uh, you thrive on uh, the training, the competition. And right now, he's, I mean, look, look where he's running with some of the best in the world. That's right. So there's Brown on the number three. Certainly got some of the veteran fans out here cheering him on. And what a battle he's getting to watch as Brayton on the 10 tries to go after Hibbert on the 168. There's no room to make the pass in that corner. This battle will continue when we return. Brown doing it for the old folks today. Nicely done. Brayton still working on Hibbert. He didn't get him in time because here comes Trey Kennard. Makes the pass. Kennard on a rail to the front. Got Barsha and Brayton within this lap here. Yeah, and this track has not always been so kind to Trey Kennard. No. At two times, Trey Kennard broken femur at this track. So trying to erase those bad memories with a good run today. Moto One was not good. Didn't have a start that he wanted. And he ended up 12th, trying to better that in this one. Right now, he's trying to get Hibbert, who is in the number 12 position. I would say more so than a finishing position for Kennard, it would be finish at yeah. this point. And try to rebuild your confidence back at this, at this racetrack. Because, oh, they're around the outside. Nice move on Hibbert. Let's see if Hibbert. Oh, no, Kennard slams the door. Oh, he's off the track. Almost picked up that Geico repeater banner, but keeps it uh, on the on the race course. But for Kennard, uh, more so than uh, than that, it's just building your confidence back at a track where, I mean, you have bad, rem bad memories, bad thoughts of that. So you need to put that behind you, look forward, and so far so good here today. And Kennard now in the number 12 spot. We'll try to set his sights on a uh, top 10. It'll be Malcolm Stewart 11th and Alessi in 10th. Uh, Pours Power Hill, they added those new rollers right there and then a little hop midway up. Makes it really challenging as you're hard on the throttle and you come up through there and, and when you take that hop, if you, if you jump off of that final one, you jump into the up face of the hill, kills all of your momentum. So you really have to manual that, try to keep the bike close to the ground. Menard definitely doing something right here. Passing three riders in about a lap and a half and now leaving them behind. Tomorrow at 12 Eastern, the 100th Tour de France concludes on the NBC Sports Network in grand fashion. Catch primetime coverage the final stage tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, on the NBC Sports Network. And there's Blake Baggett, your defending champion of the 250 class in this, the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. He's getting geared up and ready for his final moto of the day, which will be coming up right here at the top of the hour. That's the 250 class, yeah. our 450 race taking place right now. They can't watch that right now. They got their own business to take care of. Rider to watch in this one, Jeff. Trey Kennard, it's about 16th a few laps ago, and he has brought the number 41 now up to the number 12 position. So he's on the move. And for Kennard, so much heartbreak at this track in the past. He's trying to get through the day today. How bad has it been for Kennard here? Let's send it down to Aaron for an update. 
Well, you know, Jason, it's funny you bring up Kennard and this track. He seems to sort of have a love-hate relationship with Prashugal. So as you mentioned, he broke his femur for the first time. He actually rode this track in 2008. He missed in 2009. He went on to win both motos in 2010, having essentially the best racing day in his career at this track. But in 2011, Trey broke his femur for the second time, then missed in 2012. So clearly, Trey has a some mixed feelings about this track. It's been both good and uh, very dangerous for him at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. We showed the replay of his crash from uh, 2011. He was running third in the 450 moto there. So two times he has had to go to the hospital here with a broken leg. And a lot of riders do not bounce back from that at all. And then he had an even more uh, significant injury with a broken back from Supercross last year. Keep him out of this race. To have fought through all that adversity and gotten to this level again shows you the determination Trey Kennard has, and that determination is paying off despite the bad starts today. He is now working on Ryan Sipes as he wants a piece of the top 10. Yeah, trying to make the move there. It's Sipes. I think Sipes is a lap down. Uh, the next rider in the group yeah, obviously, yeah. to get is Stewart, who's yes. 11. Yep. Sipes is shown as running 35th, so that wasn't a pass. That was a rider going a lap down, but you know, the, the physical uh, aspects that your body has to recover from injuries like what Trey has gone through is one thing. There's the mental and the emotional side of it also that sure. doesn't get talked about nearly enough. And that's where you have to have a great group of people around you uh, as as the rider and the individual. You really have to, to you know, dig deep, you know, answer those questions that you have in your mind and your soul about, you know, what is your future going to be within motocross? And and so far, Trey has been able to um, to deal with that and uh, get himself back up in top form. Obviously, where he's running right now, uh, up to 12, is not what he's capable of. He qualified fifth here today. But uh, for him to be out there riding at this level after those injuries is quite the accomplishment in itself. Battle here, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Reed on the 22, the red machine, the Honda. Then it is. The smart top, Suzuki of Alessi right behind him, 800. And then Nicoletti on the NFAP Tyloo Yamaha. It's a three-rider fight. Here comes Alessi, going to make some passes. Yeah, talking about bouncing back, you know, Alessi, uh, he's, he's struggled a bit this year, and ironically, he struggled with his starts and track position early on. His speed has been pretty good, uh, but he's typically a rider that starts up front. Uh, Chad Reed, he's a former champion. Former champion, he struggled with illness all summer long. So if you can imagine, this is one of the most physically demanding uh, motorsports or sports in general, and then not to be 100%. Well, Chad's his own team owner, rides for his own team. So basically, he can't just take the weekend off and say, hey, I'm sick, okay? He's had to try to get healthy as every Saturday he goes to the race yeah. and beats himself up, okay? And then try to recover and get healthy again. So it's been a struggle for the 22. Once again, it's a struggle because this is, his results this summer have been far below what he's capable of, what what he's, um, you know, used to and accustomed to. So that's demanding within itself to find the motivation to be out there riding and to try to bring it back. But once again, when you're the team owner, hey, it's all up to you. You, you gotta do it all. Yep. Yeah, he runs that operation. He owns his own team, so he can't take time off to recover. Uh-oh. He can't get away from Alessi either. Works the inside line and makes the pass on the veteran out of Australia. So Alessi, that will move him into sixth. Same uh, line there that Ryan Villapoto used on Ryan Dungy to take the lead and possibly with uh, the seven and a half second lead that he has over Dungy now, his first overall here. See the countdown clock top of the screen just under three minutes before the two laps to go board comes out. So you're looking at probably five or six laps left in this moto. So Alessi says seventh there, but he just made the pass on Reed for sixth. It is Tickle up ahead of them on the track in fifth. Tickle has already gone up this horsepower hill. Yeah, Tickle's going to be about five seconds in front of Alessi right now. And Alessi had to do the same thing in Moto 1. He rode up to a seventh. Now you can see he has been hard on the throttle here, just really putting out an incredible effort. You can just tell by his body language that he is trying so hard to get that smart top uh, Suzuki up into the best position he can by the time the checkered flag falls. And taking a look at the lap times, uh, he's pretty equal with Tickle. So. 
we'll see with just a little bit of time left. So the battle continues here for this sixth, seventh, eighth spot. Nicoletti behind Reed. You mentioned this is the uh, Peterson Cat uh, National. The Huffman family that owns this track. They also run a logging business a couple hours south here in Oregon. Huffman and Wright Logging Company. Uh, so that's where the relationship comes to this track. And of course, we are located in a beautiful tree-lined forest. Kind of nice place to race. Well, we thought a battle was going to materialize when Philip Hodo got around Dungey. We thought that maybe Dungey was going to be was taken by surprise. Maybe he could reset things. Hasn't happened. Philip Hodo has marched away. Look at that Philip Hodo inside, outside, using all the edges of the track, keeping his momentum going, finding smooth lines. We are close. Countdown clock. Yeah, it's going to be close at the finish to see if, if we're going to have three laps or two laps left to go. But the bottom line is Villapoto now with a 7.7 second lead over Dungey has mastered the track here today. It's close. He's never won here, but right now he's riding with so much confidence, so fluid, just putting the bike wherever he wants to put it. Could he be on his way to his first overall at his home race? It has been a long wait. They were calling it uh, Area 51 up here back in 06 when he first came here as a pro. He was going to the number 51 at that time. And the bike broke in the first lap of the first moto. So his chance went up in smoke there. And he's had first turn crashes, bad starts. Pretty much anything oh. that can happen has happened. Crossed the line with two seconds. They three missed up the first moto go. by five, right? <laughs> so three laps to go instead of what could have been two. So essentially, yeah, this is going to be a long moto for these riders. Lap times are at a 2.13 right now. We have three to go on top of 30 minutes. So 36, close to 37 minutes just for your leader. Wow. Well, that is one more lap maybe for Dungy to try to at least hope something leads to Villapoto's undoing. But the way he's going right now, I don't think it's going to happen. Back here at Washougal, Washington next week. We're going to Spring Creek in Minnesota for the Red Bull Spring Creek National at 3 Eastern on NBC. That is the home race for Ryan Dungey. So while all the talk here is centered around, can Ryan Villapoto finally win in front of his home fans in the Pacific Northwest? Dungey, well, he's going to be happy to go home because he has been dominant at his home track in Minnesota. We'll see if he can stop Villapoto there. He was not able to stop him in this second moto. Two and a half laps to go in this one, Jeff. Dungey looked like he had it early in the day. Won the first moto, led in moto number two, but then Villapoto made the pass and has steadily pulled away. They both steadily pulled away from James Stewart, who will still put the Yoshimura Suzuki on the podium with the top three. So a good solid ride for him, just not quite enough to win it. Yeah, and speed early on in the motos, James had it, but late in the motos, he dropped off the pace a little bit, uh, just turned a 215 to Dungy and Villapoto's 212. First moto was off the pace by about 25 seconds. Um, right now, it's 41, so there's a big gap. But with Yoshimura Suzuki and James Stewart, they're trying to find a baseline. They're trying to put the foundation down and limit the mistakes, finish the motos, get the experience, get the points, everything that goes along with that. So I would say that all in all, this, is, this has been a, a good, solid ride for the number seven here of James Stewart. It is still bizarre, though, to be talking about Stewart in the terms of had to talk about him this year, normally known for just speed, 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 no matter what, when it came to lap times and pace, he could run with anyone. This year it has been a little bit different. Uh, Villapoto has been the fast guy, and Stewart has even admitted at times that he's trying to be consistent. Uh, he enjoys racing with this team. Uh, he doesn't seem to be as motivated by either win or crash, win or die trying, which was always the old James Stewart motto. And the three, three scores today kind of illustrate that. Two laps to go now for Stewart and everyone else. It's a pretty big gap back to Jake Weimer, 
who is in fourth. Yeah, it's a good 20 seconds back here. There he comes, number 12. Great ride for Jake Weimer, who was 10th in Moto 1. Running fourth now with just two to go. It's going to give him a pretty, pretty good overall for the day, but a big uh, boost in confidence and a great second moto for Monster Energy Kawasaki, currently running first and fourth. This would be the best finish of the season for Weimer, and man, does he need it. He has just been struggling mightily. This is the teammate of Villapoto, so you realize the standards that are there with that Monster Energy Kawasaki team. Last year, Weimer was running for podiums, top threes, and a lot of these races just hasn't found the groove. This could be a breakthrough for him. Yeah, and look right here. Look on his handlebars. He's actually running some hand guards right here. The roost at this track, a little bit of rock you can see in there, but the clay, the roost is so bad, especially up horsepower hill. Now, riders, they like to run gloves with no protection on the knuckles or on the hand. That way, it doesn't have any uh, restrictions, so you can doesn't cause, cause any arm pump. To compensate for not having any protection with plastic or foam or anything on the glove, he's running hand guards. I think it's a smart move because of how bad the roost hurts coming off of these 450. And then behind Weimer will be Brock Tickle, who is fifth. That would match Tickle's best of the year. And you'll get an idea of the gap here as they drop back into view. Look at the spectators here. Just such an awesome place to watch a race. That's Tickle on the 20. Freeburg in the 71 is a lap down. Not making it easy on Tickle. There's just nowhere to go in those S-turns. That's a nice thing. Let's him buy. Wait a minute. Tickle's got company. Alessi on that smart top Suzuki 800 is still digging. He wants fifth. Definitely. And, and Brock's going to have to... He's going to have to ride hard all the way to the finish. He's going to hang on because unless he's on the gas. Well, I'll tell you he'll ride hard all the way to the finish. This guy, Ryan Villapoto, is his Washugal Jinx finally about to end. Anything that could go wrong has gone wrong from here at his home track. First year he came here as a pro. The bike broke on the first lap of the first moto. Fans were bummed. He was number 51 that year. They had Area 51 signs and shirts made. And he had no chance to win that day due to bad luck. Crashed in the first turn of his second moto the next year. Uh, Ryan Dungey was able to put it to him in 08. Missed a couple of years with injury. Last time he raced here was 2011, and Dungey put it to him there. It has been a track that seems to favor Dungey's style more than Villapoto, but he has reversed it here by catching, passing, and pulling away from Dungey, doing it the hard way. It is going to feel good for him. Looks over at the crowd. You see him cheering. Cheering on the hometown boy here. A few more turns to go, and then he's going to make that right-hander, head down the whoop section to the Lucas Oil finish line. The fans are going to, they're going to let him know it when he comes down that final straight right here. This has been an awesome ride. He was really patient in Moto 1, uh, put in a great effort to get himself up to second. He was challenged quite a bit, caught Dungey, but here in Moto 2, once again, so quick off the beginning, dominated Ryan Dungey. This is just outstanding ride. Unbelievable that it took this long, but that only makes it even sweeter. Ryan Villapoto in front of the home state fans has finally won here at Washougal. And that looks like more of a sense of relief. Oh, you know that. And pure joy, finally. <laughs> the monkey is off the back. We'll go back to this battle for fifth. Tickle and Alessi. They're in the S-turns, about a half a lap behind Villapoto. Alessi was right there. It looks like he lost a little bit of time in that back section. It's going to give Tickle just a little bit of breathing room as they head uh, through this final tree section one more time. They've been racing for about 36 minutes at this point. Everybody's got to have some level of fatigue when it's this late in the race to be battling this hard, right? Well, yeah, and, uh, I mean, put it in perspective, our, our three leaders, they went 220 on the last lap, so they backed way off the pace. And Stewart going to finish up behind Dungey. Third, it's Jeff, you said, trying to build that base. Solid finishes for Stewart today. That's got to feel good. It looks like Tickle has what it takes to hold Alessi behind him through the finish line. Weimer is through in fourth. Here comes Tickle into this famous Supercross style whoop section that has settled so many battles right in front of the checkered flag today. Tickle holds off Alessi, matching his season's best finish. But the fans are pumped. 
their main rider has won today, and he's headed to the podium. We'll talk to Ryan Villapoto when we return. We're back here, live coverage of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship, and the fans have finally gotten what they wanted. Ryan Villapoto from Washington has won here in Washington. We'll show you how he did it with our Lucas Oil race recap. What a paddle off the start, Jeff. You're going to see some bar banging. Three riders, Grant with the whole shot makes a mistake. Dungey gets to the inside, Villapoto around the outside. So our two points leaders go head to head. Moto One winner, reigning champion Dungey has the lead. But watch this. Villapoto, so aggressive, stays hard on the throttle on the Kawasaki, just nudges Dungey out, takes the lead. And we wondered if Dungey would have the speed to keep pace. He did for a little while, but Villapoto was able to slowly but surely march away and give everyone what they wanted to see. And that is the number two being number one here at Washougal. And here he results. Dungey won the first moto. He finishes second in this one. Stewart finishes up third. Jake Weimer, that's his best finish of the year in fourth. Tickle in fifth, that matches his best finish of the season. Alessi just ahead of Reed. Trey Kennard, bad start today, still finishes up in the number 11 position. And the privateer West at Pike doing it on his own dime. 14th, another solid run for him. Now let's send it down to Aaron with our race winner. Thank you so much, Jason. I am here with a very happy Ryan Villapoto. His first win in last his last five attempts here at his home state. Always great to get a win, Ryan, but how sweet does it feel to get a win for the first time here in your home state? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, I've uh, won motos here, but never been able to uh, get an overall. So feels great to do it in front of the hometown. Um, like I said, I've raced here a lot of times and never <clears throat> never won here. So it's great and I can't, couldn't have done it without everybody at Monster Energy Kawasaki. Um, Jeff Fox and Parts Unlimited, Thor, Oakley, uh, Alpen Stars, uh, Falcon Tires, Volcom, um, everybody, thank you. Solid finish from Ryan Villapoto. Now we're going to show you the pass here for the lead. Uh, took Dungeon by surprise, you think, Jeff? Yeah, definitely was really aggressive. He was setting that up. He was testing that line. And just just really, you know, this season, Villapoto has not been afraid to ride the outsides. He made a pass on Stewart in the first moto around the outside. Now Dungey around the outside in moto two. They tie up points of the day, each with a second and a first, but the tiebreaker is the better second moto finish. Stewart solid in third. Weimer takes fourth overall with a 10-4. Lessie in the top five also. Let's send it back down to Aaron with Ryan Dungey. Thank you so much, Jason, here with second place finisher Ryan Dungey. You seem to have had the lead for almost the beginning portion of the race. What happened? Uh, just trying to go, you know. I mean, we're trying to find good lines. Obviously, Ryan was right behind us, pressuring us, but... Um, I wasn't I wasn't tight just just trying to find good lines he ended up getting around and, um, and and going pretty good you know I gave it my all and just couldn't, just couldn't hang there with him you know he had a good lines and um, he was rolling so it's good you know just part of it and uh, swapping motos you know he tied for uh, points on the day you know it's usually how it goes so we'll, um, we'll try to get better you know I think we can uh, make some uh, improvements but um, all in all it's a good day you know track was track was nasty that second moto and um, really choppy and rough, so it's um, it was good. Solid finish from you. Second place finisher, Ryan Dungey. We go to his home track next week in Minnesota. Yeah, and I would, you know, I, I think I'd disagree with him that you know, he needs to win to get himself in the championship. I'd say that, that that second moto wasn't good. He needs to change it, and he has his hometown track coming up. He has the op opportunity to do that there. James Stewart slowly moving back up the charts in points here. You see him in fourth now. A lot of that based on a solid ride today. Let's send it back down to Aaron with James. Third podium finish in a row for James Stewart. And you're a guy that's kind of known for his speed. So how did you have to tone that down to sort of compensate for this slippery track? Well, uh, the first moto, uh, we kind of struggled a little bit with arm pump, but we made like a pretty good change. You know, we thought we could make it better. And uh, it was my call. I, I completely messed up the bike. So I take that uh, as a fault. And, uh, the first couple laps, I was trying to hang with those guys and had a few sketchy moments. So uh, I, I knew I knew I had to speed for third place. It was just uh, a little bummed out because I was pretty. I'm still still happy, but a little bummed out. I thought I was uh, be a little bit better, but that that changed just jacked my day up. So those guys were good. They're uh, on, on a level fighting for a championship, and uh, we need to step it up. It's still a solid finish for James Stewart. Congratulations, guys.
3-3 on the day for Stewart. And it is, again, strange to see James Stewart in this circumstance. He uh, used to be the winner crash, checkers or wreckers guy. Uh, now he's trying to become the consistent guy. One of these days, you figure you might have the pace to run with them again. But uh, the way Villapoto's going, he's going to be hard to stop. Yeah, but also in the championship points there for James Stewart, uh, he caught up quite a bit to Barsha. Barsha really just did not have a good day all of, uh, all around. He was fourth in Moto 1, but that, uh, um, but Moto 2 just did not go his way. So Stewart made up a bunch of points. But to your point about that is that uh, it's been interesting to see Stewart uh, trying to be comfortable with just getting podiums and not winning. Yeah, yeah, and be happy with that. We got a 250 class coming up, not too far from now, but for the moment, we'll let them soak up this victory with Villapoto.